I may not want to give them Depakote, right? Because they already have liver issues. And so, uh, similarly, in a phenobar, I may not want to give that to somebody. They may have some more cognitive slowing as they get older. And so, uh, and th these other drugs, you know, Falbital can cause aplastic anemia. It can wipe out your bone marrow. I may not want to give that to somebody. And usually, they're at that risk is within the first year after that, it's really low. So if you make it after the first year, you're probably all right, but still, something to consider. Uh, as, and these, these kind of drugs, a lot of you guys who are epileptics have probably been on, that I mentioned. And so eventually, we have to go to these drugs just because, well, you failed a lot of the safe ones, or you're intolerant to a lot of safe ones, or maybe you were never on the safe ones, but you know, it's something to consider. Some of these drugs are, are really good. There's, valproic acid is one of the strongest drugs to be on. I've had a lot of patients who were stable on it, I went over the side effects, took them off, and then they started being unstable with a new drug that was safer. So now what do you do, right? And so, uh, so again, females is a big thing, right? So uh, in, in terms of treating females, young, so I'll give you an example. Pediatricians love valproic acid. So when everybody's infant or toddler or young, they get put on valproic acid, and they're not really, they're, it's controlling, it, it's a great drug, controls the seizures. When I inherit them as an adult, then I think about, okay, uh, you may be getting pregnant soon. 50% of the pregnancies are unplanned. Valproic acid is known to cause lower IQ in your kids, known to cause birth defects in your kids, right? So uh, most seizure drugs are around that 3% range for causing birth defects. Valproic acid is 8%. If it's used in combination with another drug, it's 12%. So it's higher than most other any other drug and to cause more cognitive effects potentially with your kids, which you may not notice, can cause autism in your kids. So I inherit these young teenage girls that are like, oh, yeah, I've been, I've been stable on Depakote, and I've met some of my colleagues in pedi that are pediatric and they they're like, I love valproic acid. I'm like, I don't love valproic acid. I have to start one person on valproic acid. But uh, so just especially if you're a female, I don't love it. Some of my females have it. I have a patient who had, was seizure free for 10 years on valproic acid. And she was, just got married, and I said, well, you're probably going to get pregnant soon. And so I, I put her on a safer drug. After 10 years, she had a seizure. And I said, let's go up on that drug dose. She had another seizure. She's like, you know what? I'll take my chances. I know I'm going to be seizure free on valproic acid. I'm not going to take a chance on your drugs. That's, that may potentially make me have more seizures. Right? So she went on valproic acid, became pregnant, her kid's fine right now. So, you know, we'll see later on, but you know, most kids are going to be fine, but there are a minority of kids that are going to have issues. And so, uh, so again, you, you want to take into consideration drugs that interact with the oral contraceptives. So a lot of these drugs can reduce your estrogen levels. And estrogen interacts with a lot of these drugs. So a lot of women say that I'll have my seizures more during my menstrual cycle. And so, Estrogen actually makes you have a higher risk of seizures. It's, it, it promotes the neurons to become more excitable. Progesterone is known to be protective. So certain drugs uh, interact with estrogen. For example, lamictal is a drug that is given most to females just because of, it, because of its birth defect profile. Right? So normally if, if you were on nomad, nomads, your chance for birth defect is around 2.6%. If you get put on lamictal, it's like 2.8. It's almost the same. And it's, been the, it's the most heavily tested. But Lamictal, during your menstrual cycle, it interacts with estrogen, and estrogen makes its levels go down. And then as your cycle ends, it goes up. So people who are just like, I'm, I'm good all month, and then suddenly I have a seizure, it may be because of your hormones, right? And so similarly in pregnancy, when you're on Lamictal, your levels keep dipping, 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 dipping. And you gotta keep going up. So somebody's on 150 twice a day, by the end of their pregnancy, I have them on 400 milligrams twice a day. And I'm checking their level every four to six weeks, kind of monitoring them to make sure you keep track of what's going on with the lamictal. So uh, keeping in mind that's the most commonly used drug for females that are of that age that could potentially become pregnant, you really want to worry about you know, the, the, the side effects or the, uh, what can happen with estrogen in general. Uh, so these other drugs, you know, there's still a lot of data that needs to be collected, and so we assume that some of these other drugs are safe for pregnancy. So far, nothing has come out, right? But drugs you want to avoid, you know, that have been proven to cause birth defects, you know, are some of the older drugs that are listed here. 
Topmax, or Topiramate, we used to give, when I was in residency, we used to give to pregnant women for migraines, which are very common in pregnancy, especially the first trimester. And so now we figured out, well, it causes cleft lip cleft palate. So stop that right away. And so there's questions. So if you're on a seizure medication, you're controlled, but it's one of these older ones. Should you change during preg if you find out you're pregnant? 50% of the pregnancies are unplanned, whether you married, not married, doesn't matter. So now you're pregnant, should you change your med? And so my answer is no, because they still have a low risk of birth defect. You don't know what's gonna happen with a potential new safer med. So if you switch over to the other med and have a grand mal seizure, that's gonna harm the fetus a lot more than your little eight or you know, six, three, four percent chance of having a birth defect with the medication. So in general, I tell my patients, don't try to change your med if you become pregnant. It's not the good time. If you're planning to become pregnant, that's the best time to change your med, to save your med to see it works, like I did with my girl, and it didn't work for her. There are several people, it does work. So that's the best time to change is before you decide to become pregnant. Uh, and so these are some of the drugs that interact with estrogen products and anything that gets metabolized by enzymes in the liver. And the, these are some of the drugs that are known to not be as interactive, even though the mictal can, like I told you with estrogen, the depot can make levels a lot. And so, now, so when, like I told you guys in the beginning, when I see patients, what am I looking for? What other medical problems do you have that I can potentially put you on a med that can kill two birds with one stone? And so if I could do that, that would be optimal. And so these are some of the drugs that, you know, I tend to use for people who have history of migraines, which is very common in epileptics. And so, you know, Topamax is by far one of the most common migraine drugs that is used. I tend not to use it as much because its nickname is Dopamax because people have more cognitive effects. Uh, so they do have extended release versions of it called Trochendi and Cudexi, uh, which, are, which have less cognitive effects and a little bit more difficult to getting it approved if, unless you're an epileptic. So if you just use it for migraine alone, it's difficult to get approved. There are a lot of times you can, but uh, if you're epileptic, it shouldn't be an issue as long as you've tried some other meds. Uh, I, I tend to use Zornogran a lot more for my migraineurs, which is similar in effect to pyramid with less side effects. So there's less cognitive problems. You know, they still have both can cause kidney stones and metabolic acidosis can make certain forms of glaucoma worse. But in general, yeah, it, it, it's usually more tolerated. Gap and Lyrica are good for migraines. They're not as great for seizures. So it's, you know, there is, you know, there's like a trial out of Duke that showed Lyrica was good as Keppra for seizures. But, you know, outside of trials, anecdotal trials, it's not necessarily, okay. Uh, and then, so, again, rarely used drugs for migraines are Mictil, Paramedic, Cenox, Paramedic, so if you have trigeminal neuralgia, and we consider, this is, you know, our board question would be carbamazepine. There's other drugs, pregabalin. Phenetoin I use, somebody's really in pain, I can IV load them in the hospital, and it really breaks the cycle. Um, and so some of these other drugs are more rare and using. Mood disorders, very common people to, for people to be depressed or anxious. Temporal of epilepsy, particularly high incidence of anxiety related uh, for them having it. And so, Lamictal is a great you know, stabilizer. So these are some of the mood stabilizers that we use. Notice that the pyramid is here and here. All drugs can make you, you know, they all come with a black box warning that they can make you have suicidal thoughts. So even though these are mood stabilizers, they can still have the opposite effect. Right? And so some of the drugs that are kind of famous for making the mood worse are like Ficompa or Lovitrest. Again, drugs that, you know, if somebody's on dialysis or has kidney issues, Right? I may consider putting them on drugs that are metabolized more by the liver. Or put them on lower dose, lower dose drugs like pepper, or some of these drugs that you know, ten, still can be used for dialysis and are commonly used, but just make sure you put them at a lower dose. Uh, everybody wants to be on lower dose of meds. And so basically, you know, clinical trials have shown that people who die of epilepsy, called SUDEP, they're either not taking their meds or they're on low dose meds, right? So that's one of the things you have to worry about is, yeah, I want to be on low dose, but that does put you at more risk for having seizures. And so, 
people who have you know, low sodium levels, some of these drugs uh, probably want to avoid metabolic acidosis. I, I discussed how topiramate, zonogran are famous for that. You know, these drugs can also make you lose weight. So if you're obese, I may not want to give you some of these drugs to make you gain weight. I'll probably lean towards some of the drugs down here that can make you lose weight. And vice versa, if you're anorexic, I may want to give you something that stimulates your appetite. If you have liver issues, then I'd probably want to go with a drug that gets metabolized by the kidney, uh, which are all labeled here. Don't, don't, you probably don't want to give drugs that are going to be toxic to the kidneys. People often use Depakote and Topamax together because Depakote makes you gain weight, Topamax makes you reduce weight. It's been associated with causing elevated levels of ammonia, which if you have liver failure, people who have cirrhosis, their ammonia level gets high, they get confused, lethargic, and out of it. So it can promote that. People who are on antipsychotics like Risperidol, all these kind of things also have elevated ammonia. So you see a lot of patients from the psych hospitals that are on Depakote and Risperidol, their ammonia levels high, which, which one is doing it, it's always hard to tell until you take one off. There are certain drugs that we use for essential tremors, primidone is drug of choice, clonopin, also used. And then some of these other ones are, you know, fairly effective. And some drugs, drugs cause tremors like Depakote or Dilantin is toxic. Parkinson's disease, this is rare that you people even know about this, but Keppra has been, people with Parkinson's have when they get too much cinnamon on board, they'll have these dyskinesias, and Keppra can help. Zonisamide has been known to be beneficial for several Parkinson's type symptoms. And then again, we use mood stabilizing drugs for people who get compulsive, compulsive behavior when they get put on some of these things that increase their dopamine. And paramazepine and clonopin are used for movement disorders all across the board. We can't figure it out, we'll put them on one of these and hopefully it'll work. So restless leg syndrome, drugs are used all the time. Uh, listed above, for rest of leg. Uh, these are the anti-epileptic certainly There are several other kind of drugs we can use. Alzheimer's drugs. So a lot of people worry about temporal of epilepsy. I've had a lot of patients come in and say, I have memory loss, I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. And in the last couple of years, I've had one patient with like 48 seizures, the other one with 60 seizures. No symptoms, just memory loss from temporal of epilepsy. So when the question was posed earlier, can you just convulse with epilepsy? No, you can do nothing with epilepsy. You could just be losing your memory and that's a subclinical seizure other than clinically actually losing your memory. And so, uh, so again, Capra and Breviac are kind of drugs that have been shown some evidence that they can improve Alzheimer's. Uh, Breviac in the trial in London on mice actually reversed Alzheimer's. And there's a drug in, in Europe called pure acetam, which is similar in mechanism of action, which actually has, is used for Alzheimer's. So the medical death could often use for mood, Cardiac issues, again, I mentioned how cosamide or Vimpat can cause a little bit of block. Phenotoin can do the same thing. You want to watch out for interactions with drugs and statins. And, you know, most drugs will have minimal risk. You should be fine. Thyroid issues, there are certain drugs that can lead to thyroid, issues, thyroid problems with diminished hormones. Valproic acid has been shown in studies to do both. Uh, and, so, uh, and so some of these drugs can do that. And, you want to watch out for interaction. A lot of the thyroid meds like Synthroid interact with some of the antipolitics. Brain tumors. So there's been a study with valproic acid that if they give it to people who have glioblastoma multiform, which is one of the more lethal brain tumors, that they actually survive three months longer. And so that's probably due to the toxic effects of valproic acid on even the cancer cells. Uh, is often chosen in those paper people because of little drug interaction and there's no evidence to suggest if you have a brain tumor that you need to be on an anti-epileptic. It's really the guidelines say if you had a seizure, then you get put on anti-epileptic. A lot of people still get put on when they get first diagnosed. And uh, so, again, there's different forms of epilepsy. I can keep going on about those. Okay. I started about 10 minutes late because this was. I know you did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. So there's a different form of epilepsy: juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Psychogenic, non-epileptic spells, a lot of patients with epilepsy will have that and still get placed on anti-epileptics. Some of them are mood stabilizing, so they do better. So I'll still, I'll try to get them off, but if they're saying that this is helping them, I may get them on. Non-compliance issues, I may try to use once-a-day formulations like Keprex or Lamictal Abitum, where basically this lasts 24 hours so they don't miss their doses. Uh, financial issues, these are some of the drugs that are cheaper. 
and don't smell brand names. You want to use key reduction and see if you can get drug assistance. That's it. I'm sorry, I can kind of run through that. Getting pressurized from the back, so. Uh, uh, any other questions? Do you ever use VimPath for JME? Yeah, it's not indicated. Uh, have I used it on patients with JME? I have. Successfully? Yeah. Okay. Any questions?